my name is Dawn Matthews. Welcome to this lesson in our series on computer hardware. In our previous lessons, we learned about input, processing and output. We also looked at some of the components that make up a PC or personal computer. And we identified the differences between hardware and software. In this lesson, we will see that although all computers have certain components in common, they can vary in shape, size and the way they are used. Because of this, computers have been categorized into different types. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to identify four different types of computers and describe situation where each type of computer would be used. Let's join Salai who is spending the day at the Mindset offices in the Liberty Life building. Hi Dawn, you will not believe this. When I first got to Mindset, I thought that because all computers had input, processing, output, software and hardware, they were basically all the same. But boy was I wrong. Did you know that there are four different types of computers, each with their own special use? You're absolutely right. Now, have you managed to find out the names of these four different kinds of computers? You betcha. They're supercomputers, mainframes, mini computers and microcomputers. Yes. And although all computers basically work the same, there's a great deal of difference in their size, shape and power. As it is the largest, let's look at the supercomputer first. <laughs> cool, let's go. Did you know that supercomputers are probably the fastest and most expensive computers available in the world today? Each one costs billions of rand and they can do some pretty amazing things. The first company to make a supercomputer was Cray Research. This company was started by Seymour Cray and he is sometimes called the father of the supercomputer. Cray's mission in life was to build the fastest computer in the world and in 1976 he introduced the Cray 1. True to his word, the Cray 1 was the fastest computer in the world at the time. In reality, it was about as fast as a modern-day computer that you would find in a home or a school. Hmm, but that doesn't sound impressive. But you must remember that the Cray 1 was developed nearly 30 years ago and back then it was super fast. Now, can you guess how much the Cray 1 weighed? Well, about twice the size of an average PC. <laughs> Way off! It weighed five and a half tons. That's about the same as five and a half black rhinos. The Cray 1 was so big, it even included its own refrigeration system to keep the whole system cool. Supercomputers were designed to run a single program really, really fast. They're used in situations where a large number of mathematical calculations need to take place quickly. A supercomputer is able to process more than 12 trillion instructions in a single second. Wow! Now imagine doing like a hundred things in a second and then doing one million things in a second and then doing 12 million things in a single second. Now that is super fast. Today supercomputers have become smaller and faster than the old Cray 1. They're hugely powerful, very reliable and extremely fast. But who actually needs a supercomputer? Well, anyone who needs to process large quantities of data and perform calculations very quickly. Supercomputers are used for a range of things as different as weather forecasting, nuclear energy research and space exploration. For example, NASA, America's space agency, uses supercomputers to predict weather patterns and to warn about potential climatic disasters. Do you also have one in South Africa? Yes, we do. And you will find it at the University of the Western Cape. It was bought to help scientists do research into HIV and to map human genes. It's one of the most powerful data processing tools in the world. Now, guess who made it? Mm, also Cray? Yes, that's absolutely right. It was made by the Cray Company and now the university is thinking of calling it Crunchy the Cray. That's so cool. Crunchy the Cray. Crunchy's first project will be to investigate the genetic mutations of the HIV virus in South Africa. In other words, 
scientists will use the supercomputer to work out how the HIV virus is changing. Now, what about mainframe computers? Mainframe computers are the second type of computer we will be looking at today. They're also very large and expensive. They can fill an entire room and could cost millions of rands. But they're not as large or as expensive as supercomputers. Their main purpose is to store large amounts of data and information and to make this available to many users when needed. So where would you find them? You usually find mainframe computers in large corporations or companies which have been around for a long time. In these companies, information has to be shared between all the people in the company. That requires fast, efficient transferring of information and this is what mainframes are good at. So how do mainframes organize and share information? The secret is that mainframes can act as a server. A server is a central computer that controls access to all the hardware and software on a company's entire system of computers. This means that the mainframe provides a central area where people can store software programs, data and information. Once the information has been stored in the central server, it can be accessed and used by all the other users in the company. One of the main advantages of a mainframe computer is that it can run for years without interruption. That means technicians can do maintenance while the mainframes continue to operate so you don't have to stop working while the machine is being repaired. Do all businesses have mainframe? No. Many new businesses that are just starting up didn't like to use mainframes because they're very expensive to buy and maintain. Besides, Cheaper, modern computers are getting quite powerful and could also function as a central server. Businesses that have been around a long time already spent money on mainframes because in the past, these were the only computers available that could run their businesses efficiently. These older businesses may have invested a lot of time and money in their old mainframes and it isn't worth their while to move over to more modern, cheaper options. Why don't you track down the mainframe center in the building you're in and see if you can find someone to answer your questions. Hmm, a computer the size of a room, this I've got to see. Great idea Dawn, right now I'm in a mainframe center and I've got Barney Ibrahim here who has kindly decided to show us around. How are you doing? Uh, welcome. <laughs> Thank uh, you. I've heard you guys talking outside about the fact that the mainframe is very big and it takes up a lot of space. Well, in the latest uh, technology that's not true any longer. As you can see, this is our mainframe, the size oh. of a refrigerator. Pretty cool. Would you ever replace your mainframe? Yes, we would. Uh, purely from a cost perspective, we would consider that. Now, how does mainframe work? Mainframe is really a large central server whereby hardware and software access is controlled from. We store data, programs, information, which many hundreds and thousands of people can actually access at the same time. Where is the CP of the mainframe? The CPU is inside of this box, and this box has four CPUs. How does output occur on a mainframe? Output, very similarly to your PC, occurs either on your screen, on a desktop printer, or on a mass printing device, which I will show you later. Do all businesses have this computer? No, certainly not. Small startup companies wouldn't. Mainframe is too expensive, too costly to maintain. And uh, these days, there are more cost-effective alternatives available. Now, you spoke about printers. I can't wait to see them. So oh, yes. Not... Let's, let's go and show you. Okay. Right, this is our centralized print room where all our printing happens and the main printing that we spoke about, it also all happens in here. So now you know about mainframes. What about mini computers? Mini computers are generally about the size of a small fridge and are therefore smaller and cheaper than mainframes and supercomputers. You can think of a mini computer as a modern mainframe. Like a mainframe, a mini computer is a kind of server and is today often referred to as a mid range server. Although they are much smaller, they are powerful enough to perform tasks that could previously only be done by mainframes. So, where would one find them? Mini computers can be found in department stores, factories, scientific laboratories, and banks.
A mini computer can support thousands of users, but not as many as a mainframe or supercomputer. Why don't you pay a visit to Standard Bank and see for yourself what a mini computer is all about? Hi there, can you believe it? I am here, listen to this, at the Standard Bank Super Block. Now, can you dig that? And I'm here with Andrew, who works for the Auto Bank channel. How are you doing, Andrew? Very well, thanks. How are you? I'm great. Now, I've had questions about mini computers all day long. And guys, I'm sure you've had it too. And this is the guy to answer all your questions. So, Andrew, how do actually mini computers work within the system here at Standard Bank? Well, first of all, we do not call them mini computers. We call them servers. Right. Okay. okay. <laughs> and we use the servers for different aspects of the, um, of, of, of the business. I mean, we use them for uh, mail services, we use them for our tellers in the front end, as you've seen the computers there. Uh, we use them for different types of processing in the bank. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's very cool. Now, I just want to know, are your servers linked to a mainframe? Because I've been learning quite a lot about that. Yes, yeah, some servers are. Uh, in fact, um, uh, a mainframe is a, is a, is a big server. Um, yeah. it's, it, it, um, and some servers, what, what we tend to do is, for instance, if you are doing a transaction on an ATM, mm -hmm. the information goes to a server, but the server will also access the mainframe because that's where your account sits. So it will access the mainframe to get your account information, your balance, for instance, and then push it back to the server and then back to the ATM. Now, what are the advantages of having a server or mini computer, if you may? Okay. The advantages of having a server is you can, you can locate it in different parts of your, of your businesses. Um, and, and, you can, and nowadays, um, you can uh, uh, place them remotely. Uh, as, as, as opposed to the old mainframe computers, which are really big, you, are, you, you would not be able to put them in different, t different um, locations. Mm -hmm. So uh, servers are able to, uh, they're, mo they're mobile. You can put them in different offices. Yeah, so that's, a, that's one advantage. Secondly, they can do multitasking, multiprocessing for different types of your, of your business. Right, yeah. now I've always wondered what happens when we, like, when I put my card in and I get my money out within yeah. the ATM. Yeah. Can you tell me a bit more about that? Yeah, well, the ATM has got um, a computer, mm -hmm. okay, which is, which is a simple computer. What happens is when you put your card in, it will take, it will read to find out who you are and to send that information back to the server. So the server will verify that yes, it is you, and send that information back. And then you give it instructions, and that information is passed from this computer to the server until all your transactions are complete. If there is money, the server will say yes, there is money, and the server, remember, will have pulled the information from the from the mainframe, from where your account sit, and then it will give you your money. We've learned about supercomputers, we've learned about mainframes, and we've also learned about mini computers. But I know that there's one kind of computer that we haven't learned about. What is that again? Microcomputers. That's right. Now, how does that one work? Well, the word micro means very small. So, microcomputers are small computers. But aren't PCs also called desktops? Microcomputers are often called desktops because they can fit on a desk. They're also called personal computers or PCs. These computers are found in many homes, offices and schools around the world. So what are they used for? Microcomputers can be used for writing, keeping track of accounts, connecting to the internet, sending and receiving email, even playing movies. In a company, these computers are connected to the mainframe. Mini computer or a server where they can access shared software programs, data and information. They can also stand alone with the software, data and information being stored on the computer itself. This means that they can be used without connecting to a mainframe or any form of server. This makes them ideal for home use. Okay, now I get it. There are basically four types of computers, namely supercomputers, mainframes, mini computers, and microcomputers. Microcomputers are also known as desktops and PCs. But hey, are those the only kind of computers we get? Actually, there are a couple of other kinds of computers that are even smaller than the PCs we have just seen. In our next lesson, we will explore two of these smaller types of computers. And now for your task. Name the four types of computers. Give examples of situations where each type of computer would be best suited. State which type of computer is most widely used and why this is so. Well, that's all we have time for today. 
And as always, don't forget to visit our website for more information. Till then, goodbye.